Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you two quick things before we get started on tonight's story. The first one is that I'm going to be at No Brand Con this month. It's March 29th through the 31st, and it's in The Dells, Wisconsin, or The Wisconsin Dells, I'm not too sure exactly how to say it. But uh, No Brand Con, if you guys are interested in seeing me there, it's a great convention, I'm actually really happy I get to come back, and I really love The Dells, so um, I'm really excited about this convention. I'll have a link in the description down below to tell you about it, or you can always just Search up No Brand Con. It's a rather easy name to find. The next one is that this story, tonight's story, is actually brought to you by a Patreon, Eric Mary. It's a couple of interesting stories that Eric claims to be 100% true. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Did this happen? What do you think they are? And what do you think should have been done? You guys are interested in having your own stories read? Uh, you can always send me an email at mrcreepypasta at gmail.com. If you want to make sure that I guarantee you see it, you can always support me on Patreon like Eric did. All right, guys. On to tonight's story. My job never relieves me of stress. It's still one of the best jobs I've ever worked. OTR, over the road, trucking with Tyler, my fiance. I work for a mega carrier named Prime Inc., based in Springfield, Missouri. And it's made me financially secure. It's the easiest job ever. The stress of it, though, can be very overwhelming. Sometimes you deliver freight cross-country, other times it's local deliveries and can range from hauling fruits and vegetables to carpets and paint. When you finish one delivery, they unload your trailer, all product is removed, and you're left with a dirty, smelly trailer, so that means getting washed out in a timely manner because the moment that you leave the customer's warehouse, dispatch will have issued you another load, more freight to haul. Keep in mind that customers set very sharp appointment times and they expect you to be there at their distribution centers or warehouses at the appointed time. Can't miss those times, it'll hurt you and the company's reputation. But that's rule number one about trucking. Never bullshit your customers. Even if you work for a mega carrier, or you're an owner-operator, all stress aside though, Tyler and I have seen some very unusual things out on the road. One night in particular, I was asleep in the sleeper berth, which is the back of the truck, the little window, and suddenly I hear my fiancé shout, holy shit, followed by fuck me, and I was caught off guard by this sudden outburst. I immediately got up and had seen to what he was yelling about. After all, you don't hear stuff like this often on the road. When I tapped on his shoulder, I scared the crap out of him. He almost drove off the road. His face was pale and he had a look of shock. He remained calm when he saw it was me. I asked him what was wrong and what he had seen. Rather frantically, he told me there was a man dressed in all white just walking on the shoulder of the highway. The man was walking, facing away from our truck, and when he turned and stared at our truck, his face was... was masked with a white cloth-like mask. He stared at Tyler and pointed what appeared to be a pistol directly at him. It scared him so bad, he ducked down in the seat to avoid any possible gunshot, which never happened, but instead caused him to almost jerk the truck off the highway. He was shaken up by it so badly that... Me being the sweet boyfriend I am, I stayed up with him and kept him company for the remainder of the shift, the remainder of that night. Nothing happened. About a month after the incident, I was driving through Nevada in the dead of night, on I-40 West. Barely any traffic was near or around me. I'd never been out west before, and seeing the deserts was something special for me. The dark desert seemed more magical and harmless. I didn't stare for long, mind you. I'm driving a big metal death machine, so I make sightseeing very, very brief. I eventually pass a sign that reads, Neil's Air Force Base, 10 miles, pointing out to the right off an exit ramp. When I turn back to face the road just off the corner of my eye, in my driver's mirror, I see a tall, lanky white figure with a featureless face. And long arms, must have been about six feet. 
It was running at insane speeds towards the truck. It was barely at the back of the trailer on the driver's side, moving towards the driver door truck, getting closer and closer by the second. I couldn't speed the truck up any faster to avoid this thing as prime trucks are only governed at 62 miles per hour. I frantically jerked the steering wheel to ram the trailer into it, attempting to hit it. I thought maybe that would slow it down, maybe. Maybe it would stumble and fall. I didn't want the thing, whatever it was, to get anywhere near me. Just as quick as it had appeared, it was gone. Just as the trailer was about to make contact. I was scared shitless. And immediately pulled off to the shoulder to catch my breath. And rationalize the situation. I was pretty tired and thought maybe it was just a hallucination, but I found it very hard to keep trying to figure out what the hell that thing was. All I wanted to do was get out of there in case it came back. Did a brief inspection of the truck and trailer, saw nothing wrong with it, no mark or anything. Nearly tapping the white figure, everything was fine and functional. Tyler was asleep, and him being a heavy sleeper, none of it woke him up. I hopped back into the truck after my inspection and drove off quickly to the nearest truck stop. I parked the truck once I was there, woke Tyler up and told him everything that I had seen. It was very groggy. He shot up almost instantly. I was very concerned after I explained the nightmare I had endured in a stream of tears. He held me close, told me everything was okay. I was shivering heavily. I lost all enthusiasm to continue my shift, and he understood. Despite having only three hours of sleep, he managed to pick up where I left off. I don't know how. Yet I managed to pass out sometime after he got us back on the road again. I'll never forget that night. Or the night before. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and thank you guys so much for listening to tonight's story. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you guys are enjoying all the stories that you hear on the channel. And if you are... You can always check them out here on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube, or you can check them out on Spotify if you're listening on Spotify. And also, you can check them out on iTunes and on Google Play. Um, and a special thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. Spe especially Eric Mary, Trace Mills, Lob Lolly Boy, not sure if that's the right name, Ken Higuchi, Brianna Von Teen Jensen, and I'm very sorry if I butchered your names and everyone else as well. So I really appreciate it, guys. If you guys want to have your names read on one of these outros, think about supporting on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and subscribing here on YouTube. Thank you so much, and sweet dreams.